Issue 82. We start out with some people in a notorious bar in Metropolis, joke about a rumor that Sonic killed his friends on a planet as Super Sonic. I know they're criminals, but why would they joke about that anyways? Wouldn't they hate Robotnik and be disappointed that the Freedom Fighters were gone? And of course, it was Sonic in the Black Cloak, who gets revealed for who he really is when he's overheard snarking that they weren't funny. The criminals all gang up on Sonic because Eggman's got a reward out for him, and Sonic says that he really doesn't want to get upset again, covering his eyes from the stress. He's called a coward, which would make sense from their perspective, since they think he's about to cry, and they don't know that he's afraid of turning super and killing them all to give them the punishment they deserve. Also, right away I have to wonder if Sonic honestly still thinks that he killed his friends, rather than them just immediately going up to him after the end of the previous story in the arc from their hiding place. What, were they scared? He was back to normal! I'm expected to believe they were on the plane just to survive jumping out, or did they run away and not meet up with him yet? Either way, Sonic seems to be pretty clearly traumatized by what he thought he did, acting like someone with PTSD, because rather than immediately running out of the bar at super speed, he just stays there, paralyzed with fear, and irrationally assuming that there's a risk of his traumatic event recurring from him turning super again from the slightest dangerous, stressing situation. And here, he's right, because he probably already has a lot of stress in him, making him irrational after what he thought he did. Predictably, he goes super, destroying the bar of evil criminals, somehow not killing all of them. Well, well maybe he did, and we just never learn about that because it's a kid's comic. And also predictably, all of Sonic's friends are alive. Even Kinderborg, who was in the handheld Nicole device of Amy the whole time, as they're all tracking Sonic down in a nearby street. And Johnny and Tails are pulling something with wheels behind them with a rope, even though I thought their caravan was completely and utterly destroyed. The readings suddenly go crazy, with Johnny saying that Sonic is giving off more emerald radiation than ever. Super Sonic bursts out of the ceiling of Spike's place, and again, he immediately proves that this Sonic, who is supposedly not himself, remembers who his friends are, and has a good enough memory to remember that he thought they were all dead from a plane crash. His friends back away as Amy explains how they escaped. Fortunately, he politely lets her finish talking out of curiosity in a state where all she cared about is violence. I guess she's only explaining that to him to stall him. Amy explains that she used the Kinderborg computer to fly their plane through remote control. I figured they used the remote control, but didn't figure it was from Kinderborg. Johnny whispers to Tails to pull harder because he doesn't think Amy can keep stalling for much longer. Amy says that, oh, apparently she and the rest of Sonic's friends have been on Sonic's trail for weeks. I thought this took place only hours later. Amy says that Sonic's not himself, and they just want him to get better. Sonic, after calling his friends fools in another forced, stilted, Look, kiddies, he's a villain! dialogue that's uncharacteristic of him. Super Scourge handled the dialogue better because he talked like himself. Sonic asks why he should want to turn back to normal, because he thinks his normal form was a weakling in comparison. Makes sense. I mean, Sonic could take down Eggman himself right now. He's just not able to think clearly and think ahead enough to think to do that, instead of just mindlessly destroying whatever is in sight. Without even being able to try to give him a friendship speech, Amy dodges his laser, and she tells Tails to keep Sonic distracted while she attaches Kinderboar to a star post. The energy from the star post Drag Sonic back in an energy beam. I have a suspicion about what's going to be the twist here. I've heard about it. I think they're TV tropes. It goes all wrong as Sonic flies around trying to escape, and Amy tells Kinderboar that they need more power. The Emerald Magic gets absorbed into the checkpoint, and Tails says he'll catch Sonic as he's falling from the sky. A day Sonic is told what just happened, and then Kinderboar says that he's picking up really crazy readings from the Star Post, and they may have sent all of the Emerald Energy into the Special Zone. Then he reveals that Super Sonic has been separated from Sonic into his own being and may still be alive in there. That doesn't make any sense because Super Sonic's life force and soul is Sonic. But somehow draining Sonic of his energy added energy by giving Super Sonic a soul of his own. Huh? Whose soul is that? Did someone get reincarnated into him for shits and giggles? It's interesting, but makes no sense. Also, this was the twist that I was expecting from earlier knowledge of the comic. I thought it would make sense. The story ends with Sonic saying that this has been a total nightmare, and they all risk their lives. And he says awkwardly, Thanks, guys. I, uh, owe you one. 
There's moments like these from Fleetway Sonic that proves that he's not a complete monster. Even though he's close to it, being a, a mean Sonic, he's not a complete monster. In the next story, Knuckles is rowing sails along a Mobian channel, thinking about how it's been two days with no wind, making him worry that he'll never get home because I guess he just can't swim. Also, I'm wondering how he isn't the worst guardian ever, since every other time we see him, he's leaving the Master Emerald completely unguarded! At least the robot head can shoot a laser, so maybe it isn't unguarded. He's still not acting like a guardian, though. I mean, at least with Penders, the Master Emerald was safe in the Chaos Chamber, and, like, Knuckles had the Chaotix guarding the Master Emerald in, like, Penders' stories, and beyond. This comic, he doesn't have the Chaotix guarding the Emerald. Knuckles thinks that his back is aching from rowing halfway across the Mobian Channel. I would think it would be your arms that would be aching, but I've never rode a boat, so I wouldn't know. Why would the natives of Mobius call River the Mobian Channel? The only way this would make sense would be if aliens named it that. We don't have a river named Earth River. Knuckles thinks that it'll be worth it when he gets a chest full of plans and diagrams back to the floating island to hopefully get all of its systems back online. Oh, that's why he decided to take a boat trip. He's on his way back from his adventure with the pirates, still. As we see a red sky and sun that's pretty cool, Knuckles thinks that the old boat is heavy, and figures that this is why Plunder let him take it. It's nice that they bothered to justify that, I was wondering where he even got the boat. Then Knuckles gets threatened by water badniks, which surround him and destroy his boat. He rescues the chest, calling it Buddy, and is self-aware about how he's talking to a chest, and says he's been spending too much time by himself. He climbs to safety and says to himself that he's trapped in the ocean with no means of escape and surrounded by badniks still. Why doesn't he just punch them? The land that he's on crumbles beneath him, and he falls into the water and is held under there for minutes on end until he finally gets to take another breath. Maybe echidnas can hold their breaths longer. I have to wonder why Eggman would program his badniks to try to kill people outright when they have to be alive to serve as organic batteries. That's so dumb. Maybe they're programmed to know who Knuckles is. Even the most minor of badniks, though? The, the fish badniks? I guess so, but why would... Why would they ever think... Why would Robotnik ever think that Knuckles would be here and not on Angel Island? Why would he bother programming them to know who Knuckles is? Then Captain Clan... Then Captain Claw, in a mecha with tentacles, says that everyone crossing the river has to answer to him. And he mentions that Eggman's offering a reward for his capture that he's desperately deluded himself into believing Eggman would pay out. In the next story, Tails is shown in media res staring at a destroyed zone with his arms crossed, not wanting to help the civilians. Oh, I remember this story. This is interesting. The text blurb teases that maybe he's a coward or has gone traitor. But since the former would be terrible writing even for the comic standards, and the latter would have actually been interesting, resulting from Sonic's bully making him snap, or maybe he was brainwashed, I'm sure that this will be not what it looks like. Maybe it's all simulation, and he's figured that out. Earlier that day, we see Tails flying to Echo City, and wishes that he could have prevented it from being destroyed. He thinks as lightning crackles that of course, the heroes can't be around to stop every evil act, and as foreshadowed by the lightning earlier, Tails narrowly avoids lightning hitting him while thinking that if his tails get wet, they'll be useless. Bullshit! We clearly saw him fall into the water in the Tails glued together story, and he flew out of it just fine for all we know. Tails looks dazed, and he sees a stunned civilian talking backwards about him being too late. I wonder if he's dreaming all this. Tails then wonders why the wall is falling back into place, and I'm immediately reminded of that story where Knothole was in backwards time. And in that story, Archie explained it a little better. Eggman's satellite had shot a laser trying to get Knothole back from being hours ahead in time. I don't see how Tails being struck by lightning would make time go backwards, no matter how powerful of a kitsune he is. Are there kitsunes of time? Would he he been activated from that, but he'd have to be a lightning kitsune to survive being hit by lightning, so it would have to be one- it, it, it can't be both, it can't be both types, can he? Well, Moby and Kitsune would probably be different. The civilian says that a machine destroyed everything, still talking backwards. 
It really threw me off how I keep having to start reading from the bottom of the text box. Then Tails sees a civilian running backwards while screaming backwards about how a machine might come back. <laughs> a civilian screaming backwards. This is kind of funny. It's funny to say, it's so surreal. Tails figures out from this that being hit by lightning somehow let time go backwards. I hope he's wrong about why this is happening because Archie justified this so much better that's not even funny. Amobian wishes backwards that Tails had arrived sooner. And he sees a tank, leading him to think the amusing line, I've gotta stop that tank before it does any more repairs. <laughs> As a robot trooper shouts to destroy the flying tails, Tails waits to save the town when it's early enough and flies towards the robot who's seeing him flying backwards. <laughs> he awesomely destroys the robot by flying at it at high speed and punching it, making me wonder how he hasn't figured out he's not that slower than Sonic by now. Then, for absolutely no reason, this magically puts time back to its normal flow. What, was the tank causing the time to go backwards? I don't get it. The only way this would make sense is if Tails was a lightning kitsuri, and getting hit by lightning activated his powerful magic as well as not killing him because he's a lightning kitsuri, and so he absorbed the lightning. So it activated his magic, granting his wish to go back in time and save the town. Kind of like Penders' Knuckles, where he could technically do anything, but that only happened if he really wanted to and his instincts took over. Well, normally he couldn't do anything because he wouldn't know he could do anything. Only here, it's at least activated by lightning. So that's right, the only explanation I can think of for this is one that makes Penders' writing look logical. Because at least he justified Knuckles being so powerful, his father did it. In the next story, Sonic somehow uses his super speed to suck the arrows from Metal Amy into the slipstream of his super speed, making them bend in his path and follow him. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're just heat-seeking arrows. That would have made more sense. Unless he's either creating wind to force them to move in a way that he wants, or maybe he's just controlling the wind magic and doesn't realize it. He then frees Amy with arrows alone. That is one weak metal armor. He asks her if she's okay as she holds her head, and she kisses his cheek, calling him handsome, getting another throw-the-dog-a-bone moment as she gets to kiss him for a second time, as Sonic complains that this might be worse, somehow, than fighting her. Brutus then jumps through the ground with Eggman in his battle suit in front of the heroes. Brutus shoots a laser at Eggman's suit, cracking it, and Eggman says he's got new tricks up his sleeve, and he fires out of his suit some liquid nitrogen to freeze him. He then punches Brutus apart, because Meadow gets fragile at cold temperatures. I mean, it makes sense that he'd win with his engineering skill, but we could've at least seen Brutus get Eggman to the point where the heroes would be able to arrest him for a while, and then Brutus could've replaced him for a while. What a waste of a villain. Shortfuse then wishes he'd been the one to take Brutus down, which only makes me sorely reminded of the time that he was right in front of Eggman and didn't take him down. I mean, at least he would've made more sense to have taken out Brutus because he's a robot, and so Kid's comic wouldn't be a reason to not kill him. Eggman sends a message to all sorts of TV screens explaining everything. The first story was by Nigel Kitching and Richard Elson, and it's about Sonic moping in a bar thinking he destroyed his friends weeks ago, turning super because he was threatened by a bunch of criminals that he was too stressed to just think of running away from. And Amy and Kinderbor trick Super Sonic into getting separated from Sonic and put in the special zone by an energy drainer. I know that Amy said they needed more power, so I guess that's how power was added to become Super Sonic's separate life force, because otherwise it makes no sense that Sonic being drained of his energy would have any side effects like that. But it's a cool idea. Definitely very creative. No other continuity would do this. The second story was by Nigel Kitching alone, and it was about Knuckles rowing down a river with the chest of his Ikenna documents, which I guess he still hasn't read yet. And then he gets threatened by a criminal Neneka who wants to get a reward for bringing him to Eggman. Why a cynical criminal would buy that Eggman would help him at all, I'll never know. And the final two stories of a loose stringer. For the third one, I love seeing the backwards time concept in the city, but Archie did this so much better. Because for one, there's no justification for why time would flow backwards and only Tails would be unaffected. No, Tails being struck by lightning by the magical Tails not killed or injured isn't a good explanation. Because we don't get any further elaboration on that. Like it activating his magical time continuing powers as a defense mechanism. He should've at least had a Chaos Emerald with him 
and that could have explained why it would create that effect because Chaos Emeralds are supposed to control time and space. This is why it's a massive problem to have all of the Chaos Emeralds in the world trapped in a floating island and nothing's really being done with them as plot devices. I mean, at least in Archie, like, they had all sorts of different Chaos Emeralds before Flynn came around, so it ex it would make sense that a Chaos Emerald would be used in a story. You don't have- you didn't- you didn't have to have the writers remembering where every single individual little Chaos Emerald was, because there was only a few of them. In Archie, it was a temporal beam from a satellite that caused time to go backwards. And there was greater variety in the things that happened to emphasize the backwards flow of time, like leaves falling upwards. But here, it's mostly just backwards speech and backwards running and flying. At least I got to see Tails be competent by saving the day with his high-speed attack. And a civilian even showed faith in him by saying that he wished he'd come here sooner, rather than doubting that he could help at all. And for the last story, Amy is saved by Sonic using wind magic to divert the arrows towards her and break her free of the badnik, when I'm simply spin dashing her would have made more sense consistency-wise. And Eggman defeats Brutus by freezing him with his battle suit and punching him apart. If he could do that, why didn't he do that in the first place? Was he... Well, he's talking as if this is the first time he's ever used that liquid nitrogen attack. 